Hey everyone, PTL here, and we're back at it today on the Patreon built Mark IV VR6. And today, we're gonna stiff it up a little bit more. Ah, that's right, we're gonna make it extra stiff with an HR rear sway bar. We upgraded already the rear beam with uh, energy suspension polyurethane bushings. That's a mouthful. But now we're gonna get it stiff with some metal. All right, let's get to work because this is PTL's garage. So today we're working with an H&R sway bar, and you guys can see, yeah, the good stuff. Alright, so since we already did the rear beam on this, and we did a whole new, pretty much clear the, clean off the rear end, remove the old rear beam bushings, and installed new polyurethane ones from energy suspension. Now we got the H&R one, so now we got to unbox this bad boy. Because I've had this now for almost two months, and I haven't had the time to actually put it in, so we're going to put it in today. I'll show you guys how to do it. All right, so now we're going to do an unboxing. <clears throat> Got my little fly head here. Again, I haven't opened this for over two months. So I remember what I ordered. But I personally haven't seen it yet. Oh, man. Let's see, packing slip, sticker. Ooh, nice sticker, h and R. I put that on the bad boy. And they got, sent us a uh, card here, this is pretty cool. Wider is better for spacers and adapters. Cool, cool. Um, technical information sheet. Um, pretty much on how to install it. Ah, this installs exactly like a new speed sway bar. Very interesting. Okay. Oops. Warranty information. Okay. We'll go through all that in a little bit. Hardware kit right there. Ooh, I like the powder coating on this already. It's a nice blue. have it so this is what comes actually in the box that matters these two pieces um, now the way that H&R and new speed um, pretty much do their installs they're pretty straightforward um, so this is the mo really important one right here. This is the, the bolts that um, are longer than the factory shock. So you're gonna need to get a uh, jack to put these on. So I recommend pretty much doing these first because that way the rear sway bar will be centered. Uh, install this first and then put this on. Um, again, we'll see the instructions exactly how they want us to do it, but in my history of doing sway bars uh, if they come with this style uh, mounting bracket i always do this one first and then this second because this becomes a very very big pain in the bootay so 
So we'll figure it out in just a minute. That's why we're here. We're here to do a DIY and teach you guys how to do it. But yeah, these clamps are gnarly. All right, so let's get to work. All right, tools needed for this job. Very, very little. Um, 13, a 16, and a 17 millimeter socket. 16, 17 millimeter wrenches and a 3 8 ratchet, an extension just in case. Now we need the 16 socket and wrench to remove the old uh, hardware off the uh, shock. And then the 17 is to install the new one. The 13 is to use the, to tighten down the clamp for the sway bar itself. All right. All right, so right here, we get our 16 inch, uh, 16, 16 millimeter uh, socket and wrench here. Uh, unbolt these do not remove them yet just unbolt them and then what we're gonna do is get a jack underneath here and we put a jack underneath here so we can uh, pretty much drop the amount of pressure on the shock that allows us to pull the bolt out and swap out the bolt um, we're gonna swap one at a time um, the reason why you don't want the whole beam to drop on you this is just a much much easier process just have a jack underneath here break these loose pop one out pop one in and then repeat the process on the other side all right so should, get, should break that nut loose then hold it down the jack already on here so you notice that I can pretty much pull the bolt out with ease to a point I'm gonna grab the new one in just a sec now they give you two washers one washers for before and one washers for after like that put this one after and now you can drop that and now I see I can't even move this anymore so that's how we did this side repeat the process on the other side and then we'll show you guys how to mount the sway bar on here now the sway bar won't be 100% mounted it's just gonna be on here just with the nut on here so it doesn't move around the whole point is to get the uh, sway bar centered with the rear beam itself and then once that part is done then we'll show you guys um, how to actually mount the sway bar using the bushings that are provided so the next step is the bushings bushings go on the left and the right 22 inches apart from each other equally so from the middle pretty much count 22 mount the bushings and then you're set uh, the bar remember the notches have to be facing up notches facing up when you install it this hump is gonna be facing forward um, you'll see the lettering should be facing down all right that's how this bar goes on so we're gonna walk you through on the install process now Hey -o. <laughs> all right so I've got the bar I'm not gonna drag it obviously get a piece of cardboard Here. And you're going to want to hoop it onto that. Ah. 
didn't calculate that <laughs> um it's it's a really tight fit so we got a uh, this one over here this bar uh this suspension we're gonna need to push the bolt back pretty much where it's flat and then push the bolt in to mount the sway bar and that should be it i mean nothing crazy difficult but i didn't calculate that <laughs> so i'm gonna do that really quick like I need Is that so now I got this side already uh, done um, now we got to do the other one make sure the washer again goes on last and then the nut Success. All right. <laughs> so there you go. So pretty much put the bolt loose, I mean flat against the back, put on the bar, there it's on. And it's on over there too. So now you can swing the bar forward and back and get the uh, bushing all mounted correctly. All right, we're back. Okay, so next is the actual sway bar itself being mounted. Really quick, you're gonna put the nuts that are provided just on those little bolts. So pull the sway bar up. Okay, what's in the way? Okay, this is in the way. These pop off. These aren't anything vital right now. Just in the way. now bar is here and remember from the middle you need to go 22 inches in total separated so the bushing here and in the instructions does not state to lubricate the bushings uh, probably because these aren't, aren't polyurethane so okay so all I'm doing right now is just putting the bushing on I'm not gonna do any measurements yet. I'm not at that point there. Um, just wanna show you guys if there is a different orientation for this bushing because you can put them on two different ways. And in, in their instruction manual or piece of paper, it doesn't state which way is correct or wrong. I'm trying to see which one has the most surface area of the two and it looks like mounting it this way is 
holding the most surface area of the bar onto the actual beam itself okay so there's that now they give you these metal clamps here you gotta open them all the way okay and don't don't drop stuff <laughs> working upside down it's a lot harder than what most people think. One day, I might get a lift. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like. I don't like working on a lift, just because not everybody can afford a lift. And I'm not. I'm everybody. I can't afford a lift. I can afford the floor because it's free and I can afford cardboard because I get it from work because that's free as well. <laughs> All right, so putting the beam bushing ba uh, bar back on. Now, these little uh, clamps here are evenly spaced. I mean, are, are exact all around. So orientation is not affected in any way. So just put that sucker on like that, okay? Now I'm gonna see if this will let me um, no, don't leave. I'm gonna see if this will let me let's see. Yeah. What gets in the way is you have to hook it over. And since this thing is so there we go. Alright, so now we're back. So we now space the bushings 22 inches apart uh, from an outside of the outside of the bushing. I marked them so now I know where the line is or where they're supposed to be so I know now I don't have to worry about them being in the wrong spot so the next part is getting these suckers mounted um, I don't know who thought of this but I mean this is a <laughs> it's a joke and how they want these to be mounted um, you really gotta get a uh, pull super hard on these brackets if you want them to not um, not give you such a hassle um, but they're gonna give you a major hassle because it, it sucks it honestly does um, you have to kind of bend the bend the bracket as best you can by hand no special tool and you'll see like there's a fat gap here uh, this doesn't even line up at all so we have to like pull this bar down and like bend this and just keep 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 forming it until you get it where it needs to be eventually you'll you'll get it on there
There we go. That looks good. I'm going to confirm it with the sheet. And it doesn't want it like that. Oh, poo. It wants... It wants this the other way around. Ah, this is such a cock a -doody. So it wants this bolt facing the other way around. So it wants it like this. And it wants you to have this in the middle. Jimmy Willikers. You're gonna watch me struggle for a bit. Because <laughs> this is stupid. How they want you to do this. Okay. So what I'm doing is pulling down on the bar here. So what I'm trying to do is make more slack as it goes down and it's, it sucks, man. Thank you H&R for a very, very difficult product to install. Hopefully it makes it make, that makes a difference. I know they do, but you know, it's a lot of work for two bolts. The new speed ones are already pre-bent, which is nice to the shape, and you just manhandle them in. That's it. Two hours later. All right, guys. Finally done on both sides. Whew. Talk about a pain in the bootay. Um, so, again, what we ended up doing is getting the straps, or not the straps, but the clamps, flattened out, put over, bent straight down, and then try to forcibly thread them on. As you can see, they're both on. Um, you'll see on there and on over there. They're both there. Um, this job should take technically, all right, technically two hours tops. I don't think it's going to take you that long. I think it's going to take you longer. Um, and the reason behind it is these clamps are not, again, not meant for this pro uh, this this procedure um, since they're not bent to the shape of the beam i could see why but they've could have been a better way of doing this honestly um i know i'm ranting but let's just end it but again strain out the clamp as good as you can bend it over uh, thread it on and kablam you got it on um torque specs to the rear sway bar uh pretty much are the same torque specs of your shock mount so we'll give you guys that information there's no specific torque spec for these guys. More than likely, um, it's just good and tight. Um, that way there's no slop. If you feel any slop in the bushing or anything like that, then you gotta tighten down a little bit more. Um, as per their manual, there wasn't stated any, any specification for a torque spec for these guys here. So 
these are good and tight these back here are pretty much um to manufacture torque specs and that is it um i'm not going to give you guys a breakdown on the torque specs because it's legitimately just two bolts just google your shock mount um back here and you're you're set and that in a nutshell plus a lot of frustrations is how you install an h and r rear sway bar thank you guys and have a wonderful day and as always we're gonna break we're gonna fix and we repeat this is bgl's garage peace out everyone